Hey, thanks for coming out today. Appreciate it. You guys are ahead of the game, so that's a good thing. Uh, so pot, Mary Jane, weed, the kind bud, dank nuggets, now the fire. Whatever you want to call it, it's cannabis. Now the cannabis plan is becoming a business in today's society. The days of reefer madness, the 1937 Stamp Act, and the well-ignored LaGuardia Report are basically over. The truth is coming to the top. The cannabis plan is non-addictive and is once again proving to be a medicine, just like it was at the turn of the century when Eli Lilly and Parker Davis were producing cannabis extracts um, for sale. So now, here we are, 1996, California passes their first medical marijuana law. 22 states have passed it now, Minnesota being the most recent one, and two states have what they call recreational laws. In both these states, business is booming. Entrepreneurs are finally starting to come out of the closet, so to speak. True branding of cannabis products are definitely in its infancy. You have debark. Hold on here, I gotta press something. What am I pressing? Oh, <laughs> uh, here it is. Well, there's the... Okay. Um, sorry, bear with me for a second. So, D Keith Cola, D-Bar Candy Bars, Dixie Elixir, and Ebo, just to name a few as, um, as far as the edible market is concerned. Uh, Kyle Cushman, who is an eight-time Cannabis Cup winner, um, he's come out with his own fertilizer line that he just released it about two months ago. Basically, Kyle's been developing this for years. Um, he steps above organics to what he terms as veganics, so we're all familiar with people who eat organic food, and we're all familiar with vegans. So his basic premise is the nutrients that this plant needs. So for years, this industry has mostly operated in what you would call a legal gray area. Um, most of the products were, that were developed were developed by what mainstream entrepreneurs would consider potheads. Somewhat true, but that doesn't mean that they don't have good ideas. Um, many of them do, and some will revolutionize this business one day. Um, because of that, and the fact that this is a very lucrative business, mainstream entrepreneurs are flocking to the industry in states that are in much need of, of money, are also reluctant but happy to have the revenue to the tune of millions of dollars. With all this coming together, how does a master grower communicate with his new boss? You know, hey dude, I need some more newts. Or an angel investor who asks about startup costs or, or anything along those lines and they get this blank stare because these guys don't know what they're talking about. Mainstream entrepreneurs are gonna to need to learn to deal with this culture and communicate. Both sides are gonna to have to learn to communicate with each other. It's gonna be very important going forward in this industry. You know, I've been a rec recreational user for years. To be honest with you, I never really gave a lot of thought to the medical side of this. When I moved to, to California, I, it wasn't a day. I, I was just amazed. The people that I met, the stories that I heard, I mean, just totally blew my mind. Um, as, as a caregiver, I helped a few different people. Um, one of my first patients had developed neuropathy um, after her chemo. She, was, uh, she taught color for L'Oreal. And uh, I'll just give you a couple of strains that worked for her. O, um, Sour D and OG Kush were the two strains that seemed to work for her best. I had another patient who I had met and we just got talking about Oxycontin and pain pills. I have a niece who has that issue, thank God. I think she's getting ready to graduate at Auburndale here in a program, so hopefully we won't have this issue anymore. But his brother had stolen about everything he could steal from his family. And basically he said, I don't want to go down that road and I want a non-addictive way of controlling my pain and that's exactly what we did for him. And the strains that he liked were GDP, which they call Granddaddy Perp, and LA Confidential. So, you know, those of us who know how, who understand how to grow know that it's not that hard, but we also know it's not that easy. We also know that if you try and do this on your own, be prepared for failure. Most of this is because the information available is basic and not everything obviously is what it seems on the internet. So trying this on your own can cost you thousands of dollars and a lot of heartache. Just so you know, I've helped plenty of gardeners who have failed one, two, three times and have come to me for help. 
um, and they thought they knew how to grow this plant and they knew to know how to grow plants. But the difference is that the cannabis plant is a very unique plant. It has many different strains and a lot of those strains have very unique things that they need at specific times. And if you don't know these things, you're not gonna be successful. And there are growers out there that have learned this and to this day, they're not really will willing to share those secrets with people and it's kind of still ingrained in this industry right now. So I'll give you an example. I was um, looking at some property with a client the other day. There was a tomato farm right next door that had some greenhouses and we wanted to look at the greenhouses. We got talking to the guy who's running the greenhouses. We're leaving, we've, we've looked at everything and I asked him about the water because the property next door would have been drilling into the same aquifer. And he told me that his pH level was 5.2%. I said, wow, I go, so that means you're having to add um, pH to up your, you know, to up your pH, acid to up your pH. And he said, no, he says, the tomato plants grow fine. Of course, you know, he, this is a guy who has a friend in Canada who grows tomatoes and also grows cannabis. And I started to explain to him that the cannabis plant won't grow at that pH level. And he said, oh no, uh, 5.2 is the new 6.5. <laughs> So I didn't argue with them. We get back in the car and I make a comment to the people I'm with and their comment back to me was, well, he sure sounded like he knew what he was talking about. That guy was not gonna be your master grower. So those of you who are looking to produce 100 pounds a month in the state of Florida, you are gonna need a master grower. The problem is there's no growers are us. There's no master grower search in monster.com. And the other issue is, is some of the people that you're gonna come across, they, they really don't have the experience it takes to produce 100 pounds of medicine a month. Most of these guys are been growing in a basement or a closet. They really uh, lack large production skills. Even if they know how to grow the fire as it, as it were, they still do not how, know how to grow a lot of it. So you're gonna ask, what makes a master grower? You know, a master grower really is a breed of their own. Um, many of them come with large egos. Uh, they, they understand the cannabis plant. Um, they understand the different strains. They understand the different phenotypes within those strains. Um, they have knowledge of cloning as well as growing from seeds. They also know how to build. They know a little bit about electricity and they know a little bit about plumbing. So if I were to really put it all together, I'd say a master grower is like a, a well-rounded handyman who knows how to grow great cannabis. So looking for a master grower with a large plant count is something that you're gonna be looking for. Um, this, this person should basically be taking a rundown every 60 to 65 days, basing on the strains. Um, this experience will give him, give him the ability to produce what you need to produce. This person should also have some outdoor cultivation experience. Um, you know, growing on a large level like this, this is the person that's gonna be able to produce the clones and produce the product and get the production going that you need to keep an ongoing production. You just don't put a seed in the ground, grow it, cut it down, put another seed in the ground, grow it and cut it down. It doesn't work that way. So, you know, I've been, uh, I've been in this industry for years. Um, I've been cultivating for over 20 years. I have experience with setting up large rooms as well as large warehouses. I've been a bud tender and I've been a caregiver. So when you add all these things up, that's, that's your master grower. That's, that's what you're looking for. You know, this master grower, he's gonna be the guy that's gonna be able to lead you through what you need to do to set your warehouse up properly. He's the guy who's gonna work with your HVAC people to make sure that your temps and, and humidities are in, at the right level in your bedroom or your flower room. Make sure the room that you are curing your, your medicine in is properly temped in humidity and humidized as well. You know, you're also gonna probably wanna look at making sure you have an electrician. Make sure that you're electrically compliant. So those are things you wanna look at. It's also, uh, and there's also gonna be a lot of other issues you're gonna look at in a large grow. I'm just gonna touch on them real briefly. One of them is zoning. Uh, it, you know, I know that they're talking about building on just agricultural land. I don't know when, the, when yes on two passes if it's just gonna be that. But you're gonna have to probably have CUPs for the warehouses, which means you're gonna have to deal with zoning boards. You're gonna need an attorney. You're gonna need letters from landlords and you're gonna be going to plenty of city council meetings. 
So be prepared for all this. That's about all I have for you guys today. And I wish I knew how to get to the...